Hello there, today we've got an Amstrad 901 and this particular version is the genuine made in Japan one. So we just zoom in on that. As I've said before, there's three versions of these. There's the made in Japan one, there's the made in Hong Kong one and there's a pirate copy which is made in Hong Kong. Well, this is the genuine article. I went to a radio rally this afternoon. Well, basically, for those of you who don't know, it's a car boot sale for radio hams full of junk. And I bought this for £2.70. And I thought, ooh, that's worth having a look at. And especially as it came with a power lead, because uh, these are um, a bit few and far between for this particular variant. So I've made up a new mic for it. And it's got a sticker on the front, which, as you can say, says, he says no receive and low transmit. And that's exactly right. So we lit up like that. And I'm going to take the lids off and we'll see what's inside. Okay, having opened up the set, I decided to put the radio into public address mode because it was dead on receive and it was still dead in public address mode. On these kind of radios, the audio IC is quite a simple part of the audio amplifier and in public address mode, it's usually quite easy to fault find. So I've plumped for the audio IC and so I'll just put this set to one side and zoom in on this and in actual fact, We've got a hole right in the chip because it seems clear to me that the radio has been reverse polarity and this would be absolutely typical. And we'll just see that, I'll just tilt that so we can get the light on it. And you will see that there is a hole just there. So we've replaced the audio and I see that's our fourth, first port of call. I've also noticed that the bar graph display is not working which means it's usually taken the BA656 display driver out. And, and there's still no audio. If I switch this on onto public address like that, testing one, two, three, four, five, got a dirty volume control, but we have restored PA operation. Switching it back to receive, we've got no receive. So next thing, which it will have taken out, I don't even need to look at the circuit diagram which I've got in front of me here, will be the FM demodulator IC, which is the LA1230 which sits just under that bit of wiring. And then the other thing it will have taken out will be the, as I say, the BA656 bar graph display driver. So what I'm going to do next is change the LA1230 and we'll see if we're greeted with proper receive. I'll be back in a moment. So what I've now done is to change the audio, um, the receive uh, si subsystem IC, which is the LA1230 just down there. And I'm now receiving but at low volume and it feels like it's being strangled. So we'll look into why that is and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, having sorted out the problems with the um, Amstrad 9, one I bought from the rally at £2.70, uh, it was indeed the audio IC with a hole in this as I showed you, the LA1230 um, IF subsystem and the BA656 bar graph driver. So it's clearly been reverse polarity or 24 volted or something like that. Uh, as you can hear, we've got receive, we've got transmit. Um, I've run through the basic things that it works, but I haven't done any alignment. The green resistor had been replaced with this blue resistor, which was the wrong one. That's 16 ohms. It should be 3.6 ohms. Um, that is a 3 watt one, but it's a military grade one, so it's a bit smaller than the uh, normal one you see, but it does the same job. Because that's what I happen to have in stock. Um, so we'll just start with the transmit alignment. Now with the wrong resistor and it was doing uh, 2 watts, it's now doing 3.2 watts. And so we'll start with the first coil. I'm not going to do the VCO on this, I've checked it. Uh, and I've done this with you before on the Mustang 1000 and probably on the Fidelity 2001 as well. So I'm not going to always show you the VCO setup, but that's the VCO coil and you put your test point goes to one of these capacitors. So that's something to look at. So first one is transformer two. So there's transformer two. And that's peaked. Transformer three. And that's peaked. Transformer four. With it having been blown up, I'm not expecting it to be far out of alignment. Just melt the wax in the uh, the next coil, which is L4. So we can adjust that. Uh, 
and that was at peak so that's fine and then the same applies with the L8 and there we have it that's 4 watts so having set up the transmit power we need to now check the bar graph that is showing a full range just make sure that's in correct uh, alignment so it's RV1 I'm just making it like the plus 30 that's excellent low power isn't adjustable but we will check it and low power on this radio is doing 0.3 of a watt I'd prefer it to be 0.4 but to say it isn't adjustable on this model. Moving over to the transmitted audio, the deviation. RV3 adjusts that. We'll switch the oscillator on. I can't show you the oscilloscope today because I managed to break the camera. Probably by looking at it. And my goodness, what's that showing? Um, four and a half deviation. That's far too high. So we'll reset that to with VR3. To two and a half. It must be transmitting on three channels at once doing it like that. Now we'll give it the whistle test. It's now actually a bit too quiet. And then the wallow, and that's fine. So that's set that up. Now we need to check the transmit frequency. The transmit should be on channel 20, 27 decimal 79125. It's showing us 2779115. Sometimes now as these are coming to being 30 something years old, they don't always pull up and the only thing is to change the 10.24 crystal there. But we'll adjust it with the coil there and just see whether we can bring that up. And it has come up to spot on 279125. So that concludes the transmit on the Amstrad 901.